Hello everybody, Dr. Carlo Oger, board certified emergency physician with DrER.TV. You are watching this video at EDX Video Pro, channel designed for the healthcare enthusiasts, those that want to learn about medicine, real high yield education. Um, this video today is going to be a short one. This is a particular patient who presented to the emergency department, had no fever, no recent surgery, no history of IV drug use. He has complaining of back pain, back pain that was very intractable. It wasn't resolving with very strong pain medication. The patient was antsy and very uncomfortable. When the blood work was done, there was only a slight elevation of the white blood cell count. Whoops, let's change that. Only slight elevation of the white blood cell count. An MRI over the thoracic spine confirmed the involved segments. Exquisite pain with any movement of the lower back, but when you did the exam, there was no overlying erythema, redness, or warmth. The blood work, he had an elevated ESR, erythrorite sedimentation rate, a CRP or C-reactive protein of 194, that's really high. Patient did have tachycardia of 103, mild distress, secondary to pain, but sense of humor intact. This particular physician who posted this um, picture, he says that in my experience is that pain of osteomyelitis or discitis doesn't, does not improve significantly with the opioids. When they say the pain is still 10 out of 10 after 2 milligrams of dilaudid, the pretest probability is that, that suspicion that something is really wrong goes up. It might be anecdotal, I mean it might not be real signs and proven medicine. But he was just posting and asking if, the, if this is something that they've seen before. This is the MRI of the spine. And you can see right here on the lumbar spine. Let me zoom in. You see the increased uptake right there. That is the discitis. And you can see um, kind of this bulging area there. So this is an infection of the discs of the patient. This is a very easily misdiagnosed because patient presents with atraumatic back pain. They don't look necessarily very sick. And unless you do a proper workup, which include the ESR, CRP, like those tests, you don't just get them routinely. You have to think about it. So um, usually you see this in immunocompromised patients, diabetics, people that have had injections to their back. But lately, we're seeing it more and more as we are more conscientious of the diagnosis and looking for it in normal patients that don't have any real risk factors. And a lot of it is happening because hematogenous dissemination. That means that the bacteria are floating in the bloodstream and eventually find their way to their disc and causes the discitis. Now, this is a serious uh, infection because it's so deep it's usually diagnosed late by then there's a lot of swelling around the spinal cord right there and that could lead to permanent neurological deficit uh, because if the treatment started late then patient has chronic and more permanent things so if you have a patient presented with intractable back pain very antsy and uncomfortable if they have anything abnormal like uh, tachycardia um, and the white comes a little bit high and you really cannot explain their pain, then you probably need to go searching and fetching and fishing. Yeah, go ahead and do the CRP and the ESR. I mean, if they're elevated, it's going to send you down the right path. But just because it's normal does not exclude the disease either. So make sure you think about it, you look for it, and then you'll make the diagnosis, possibly saving the patient from prolonged, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, consequences like being paraplegic or losing mobility of the legs or a progression to where it progresses uh, more proximally to the spine involves multiple levels and the patients become very sick. So uh, osteomyelitis, discitis, very difficult diagnosis to make, high index of suspicion in a patient presents with back pain and slightly uh, infectious symptoms like low-grade temperature, uh, elevated set rate or CRP, a slightly elevated Y count remember that all right that's it for today i hope you're enjoying this uh clinical case series again don't forget to like subscribe and share so that i can keep making videos for y'all take care and good day